Hello and welcome to this short video on the uh, use, setup and checking of the SAV04. Just wanted to do this quick video to show people how to come in on a daily basis, check their machine, set it up for correct use and then initially how to start using it. There are some much more extensive videos out there that talk about how the machine works, why it works and all the, the, the complications surrounding those setups. This is really just your daily checks your things you're going to have to do every day just so you're confident that you can start using the machine. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to start with is when we turn the unit on. When you turn the unit on, we're going to get a splash screen. It's just going to say uh, produced in the UK. It's going to give you a serial number, which you may or may not need in the future. Then it's going to go to a second screen, and that's the one I want you to pay attention to. Um, look at the runtime hours. There are two things at the bottom of the screen. Uh, RT for runtime, and then the IPPV time. Look at those, and if your IPPV time is getting up to sort of 500 hours or so, you're probably looking towards a service. Certainly by the time it gets to 1,000 hours, you should be having a service. So that comes on, turn the machine on, it says manufactured in the UK by Vectronic Services. Then it gives you a splash screen with the, the sale date and the runtime figures. It's very quick, but you only just got to note that uh, IPPV and runtime at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so the unit's now on. How do we do a leak test? We need to do a leak test on, on all the things we use. We need to do a leak test on our, our circuits in the morning, we need to do it on, on Merlin, we need to do it on this as well. So how do we do that? It's really simple. What we're going to do is we're going to set our trigger pressure like here to 10, push it to 10, commit it, and it's on. And then we're going to just put this to IPPV. And it's ready. And now I'm going to take this valve, nothing else on it, but this port is blocked off. If it's not, put your finger over the end. Put your thumb just over the port like that, and then squeeze. Just squeeze with your thumb very gently. And just the compression of the gas in there from the movement of the ball of my thumb into that area is enough to raise the pressure by 10 centimeters and trigger the ventilator. So just like this, trigger, trigger. Trigger, trigger. Now, the movement of air in there is probably fractional. It's probably less than uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 mils. So if there's a leak, it's gonna show up. So this is a very, very sensitive test. Okay, so the second test we're gonna do is we're going to just do a very uh, quick functional um, dynamic test. We don't need a patient for this. We're just gonna pop this in here. I've got the extension kit on here. If you didn't have the extension kit, then you're um, tube with them need to be connected to, to this port here. But it's the same process. I'm just going to put that on there. I'm going to turn the oxygen flow to about half a litre, somewhere between a half and one. Leave it on 10. Put it to ventilate. Put my thumb over the end. And we get this rapid click click. So I know it's all working. I know that the gas going in is uh, going through this tubing. There's no leaks in this tubing. It's not split or anything like that. The valve is working correctly, as we've already established, but the plumbing is correct. Okay, if I turn the flow rate up, notice that instability phase very, very quick now. Click, 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 click. So that's our dynamic test. So we do our dynamic test, turn that off, turn our oxygen off, and now we're ready to connect our patient and start ventilating. Right, so now we're just going to look at the plumbing arrangements for the SAV04. Again, covered quite extensively in other, other videos, but just to recap for now, we've got our fresh gas flow coming from the anesthetic machine directly out um, from our flow meter here, down this um, clear tubing to our TPs. Now I'm using the extension TPs here, but that could, if I wasn't using the extension, just be connected onto there. So that goes onto there. And for the waste, well, we have two options. We can put this, this rebreathing bag. So this is a open-ended um, half litre bag and we can scavenge our gas from that. This setup here will allow the patient to be breathing spontaneously before we go to ventilation. If it's never breathing spontaneously, it'll never suck in air from this circuit. And this bit here could just be tubing. It doesn't have to have a, a bag to allow rebreathing. So, as it stands now, we can put a patient on there and it will breathe spontaneously. As soon as we go to ventilate, then this will almost, almost be out of circuit from the patient's point of view because it will force air in and gas will then be pushed out by the patient's expiration. So that's the setup. It's very simple. Um, and that's all we need to do for the SAV04 uh, plumbing setup. Okay, so let's put a patient on this. Let's take my little uh, cat here. 
I'm going to use the same setup I just had, plug that on there. So I've got the, what is effectively the TP setup. Now, what do we do? What do we set our fresh gas flow at? Some very, very simple things that you can do. Let's start with one second. I think in a lot of videos I've talked about inspiration that being one second. Good starting point. And for anything from five to say 50, 60 kilos, not a bad starting point at all. So let's say one second inspiration. And then all we need to know is estimate that tidal volume. So this patient, I know has got a tidal volume of about 20 mils. So let's take 20 mils, multiply that by 60, because we've got one second for inspiration. So um, that's an, a peak flow of 60 times 20. So 1.2 liters. So I'm gonna set my flow to 1.2 liters. Thereabouts. Put to ventilate. My IT time is 1.0 seconds. So very quick calculation. Do your tidal volume, multiply it by 60, and that's just setting for your fresh gas flow. Once you've done that setup, you can adjust the IT time by turning the fresh gas flow. If I turn this up, my IT time has now dropped to 0.6. If I drop it back down to 1.2, then we're back to a second. Want to change my respiratory rate, which is now 27, I will change my, my expiratory time. Now my respiratory rate has dropped to 22. So they're very simple. Take your, take your total volume, multiply it by 60, there's your fresh gas flow rate. So there you have it in a nutshell, SAVO4 checkup and test in the morning. Look for the runtime, do your thumb test, do your dynamic test if you've got any concerns. Connect up in this manner, calculate your fresh gas flow and begin ventilating if you need to. If you don't ventilate, obviously please have the T piece. When you're ventilating, adjust your fresh gas flow to change your IT, adjust your Expiratory time to change the respiratory rate. And the last thing, obviously, your ventilation pressure will dictate the tidal volume. So if you see the inflation of your chest patient not being what you need, then increase the peak inspiratory pressure slightly. If it's excessive, decrease the pressure to change your peak inspiratory pressure. And that's it. So very quick test. If you want further information on the intricacies and, and control of this uh, device, look at the SAVO for general videos, but this is a, a quick morning uh, check and test. Thanks for watching.